Well, good morning, folks, and all lunar enthusiasts. It is Wednesday, sorry, it's not Wednesday, it is actually Friday, August the 8th, 2025, and we're going to take a, another short trip around the lunar surface because today we're actually treated to a stunning waxing gibbous moon. We're just one day short of a full moon. The moon at the moment is 99% illuminated. Now, that Terminator line that we've been watching in other videos it's almost completely gone it's from our perspective to the far left hand side of the moon that's on its western limb so join us as we explore some of the moon's most intriguing features we'll journey across volcanic wonders some mysterious swirls elongated craters and uh, some ancient lava seas all bathed in the golden hues of lunar dawn so let's start our tour so let's first of all let's head towards the Grithusian domes now these are uh, a pair of enigmatic volcanic mounds that are perched on the western edge of Mare Imbrium these aren't your typical lunar features they're more like rounded mountains with Mons Grithesian Gamma spanning about 20 kilometers in diameter and rising over 1,500 meters high, while its eastern neighbor, Delta, is slightly smaller at 13 kilometers wide, but it is taller at 1,550 meters. There's no true depth as they're domes and not craters. So their origin is a volcanic puzzle. They are formed from thick silica rich lava. These, now this, these uh, eruptions occurred around 3.8 billion years ago. Now this silicic uh, volcanism is rare, possibly from remelted crusted material. Now they are named after 19th century German astronomer Franz von Grudhusen. Uh, who famously thought that the moon was inhabited. Now these domes do stand out with their high albedo and rough texture and surrounding them is the fast Oceanus Parcellium. Moving south into the heart of Oceanus Proxellarum we encounter Reiner Gamma. It's one of the mo moon's most bizarre albedo features. It's a bright tadpole shaped lunar swirl that stretches about 70 kilometers long. It's not a crater and it's not a mountain, so there's no depth or height. Instead, it is a flat, high ref uh, reflectance pattern on the surface, a bit like an abstract art painted in light. Now, its origin ties to a strong localized magnetic anomaly at about 15 nano -testis, Tesla strong. It's, this creates a mini magnetosphere that deflects solar wind particles. Now this prevents the surface from darkening over time, possibly from a cometary impact or some sort of ancient seismic wave. Now early maps mistook it for a crater, which was named after Galileo, but it was later reassigned as Reiner, Reiner Gamma, a satellite feature of the nearby crater Reiner. Now the surrounding area is the dark basaltic plains of Oceanus Proxellarum uh, with the Marius Hills volcanic domes to the east and there's no major craters interrupting the swirls looping extensions. Venturing to the southwestern limb we arrive at Schillard Crater. Now this is a striking lozenge shaped impact that is about 112 kilometers long and over, over 60 kilometers wide at its broadest. Its depth plunges to 3.8 kilometers with a terraced inner walls and a flat floor likely flooded by ancient lava. Now this was formed by the fusion of at least two overlapping impacts during the pre nectarian era. Schiller's elongated bend and the outer ramparts tell a story of, a colossal, of colossal collisions. Named after Julius Schiller, a 17th century German attorney and cartographer who reimagined constellations with biblical themes, this crater stands out in the rugged terrain. Around it, the Schiller Sushis Basin, a fast annular plain, looms to the southwest. By Dorsum Buscher, 
a 90 kilometer wrinkle ridge runs north to south nearby and the floor's double ridge and bright patches catch the terminator's light beautifully, defining the interior like a spine. However, the shadows emphasize its unique geometry. Now NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Observer did capture a solitary nine meter diameter boulder that's nested on the sloping walls of Schiller's Central Peak, leaving a fresh looking trail behind it. Now, though, though the path may appear recent, uh, overlying small craters suggest it stopped moving tens of millions of years ago. Now this quiet testament to lunar surface dynamics adds a dramatic and tangible story to this particular feature. If we head back northward, we spotlight Mons Arumka. It's an isolated volcanic plateau about 70 kilometers across, which rises to a maximum of 1300 meters above the plains. It's a cluster of around 22 domes, some with summit craters, forming a gentle mound with, without any significant depth. This shield-like complex originated from slow cooling lava eruptions between 3.71 and 3.51 billion years ago. It's a rare lunar volcanic hotspot, extruding about 1,800 cubic kilometers of basalt, named for Karl L. C. Rümker, a 19th century German astronomer. It was a candidate site for China's Chang'e 5 mission. The surroundings include a scarp separating from the mare with young lava plains to the northeast and wrinkle ridges uh, weaving nearby. You can observe low slopes and domes can, as they cast subtle shadows revealing their effusive volcanic history. Finally, as we approach the central near side of the lunar surface, we gaze upon Mare Fabrum. It's a rounded lava plain, 242 kilometers in diameter. It covers 55,000 square kilometers. Now this would have been born from basaltic floods, uh, which followed from an older crater formation with the Proloceran Basin. It's a testament to the moon's volcanic past. It was named uh, the Sea of Vapors in 1851 by Giovanni Riccolelli. Bordered by the Mons Apennius to the northeast and connected to Mare Ibrium, it features the Rhyl Rima Hygienus and Crater Hygienus slicing through its south. So watch tonight as its edges do catch the light, highlighting the transition from Mare to Highlands. Watch for the subtle ridges and secondary craters dotting the area. So that's our quick tour for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have learned something new about our uh, Lunar Companion. So join us again. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It does help us. And thanks for watching, folks.